5.21. Much to you. Say amen. Amen. First Thessalonians 5.21. And this is not the time nor the season to fall off. Amen. amen. Uh, this is the time and the season uh, to prove. Amen. We were called to prove something in the name of Yeshua. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. And it says, prove all things. Amen. I want to read it in the um, 521. It reads in the, the New Living Translation. But test everything that is said. Amen. Hold on to what is good. Amen. Uh, we're in a place in a position. Hallelujah, we're called, hallelujah, to prove. And what, what is it that we're called to prove? You're called to prove the word that Christ spoke over. Amen. Now listen to this. I was meditating on this when I came. Hallelujah. In our ministry, hallelujah, <laughs> we lose people to answer prayer. Amen. Um, uh, answer prayer is what's breaking up marriages. Uh, answer prayer is what is causing people, Hallelujah, to lose and leave their ministry. Come forth for Minister Jackie. Amen. Come forth to show him. Mimi. Man, that's good. Your feet touched the ground today. Come on. <laughs> and we'll, we'll throw in there uh, Pastor Princess and Minister Ron. They married and, they, and these are the kids. Amen. First of all, Hallelujah, first of all, they prayed to get this kid and they had twins. Amen. Ron, you got a nice. Nice hair up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I'm, well, when you lose your hair, you, you can notice stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, your hair is real close to that. You can't see anything. It wasn't put apart. <laughs> Y'all don't understand. I, mean, I don't know how men go bald quietly. <laughs> fight that. <laughs> Let me hear what you're saying. Now, first of all, they pray to get kids. They get answered prayer. Then the kids get on their nerves. Then they're upset with the kids. What's happening in our ministry, I mean, people are strong, they have their marriage. Then they pray to get a new job. They get a new job, and their new job, Holly, now takes them away from their husband and their kids. Come on, Benny. They meet a new person on the new job, Holly. They're attracted to the new person on the new job, Holly. And before you know it, hold hands. They're holding hands. They got more unity on the job. Why are you smiling like that, Jack? Something going on the job. <laughs> You're smiling. You want to hold Benny's hand? Oh. Uh, come back over here. Okay? Come on, let's proceed to time off and like the prayer question. But answer prayer. <laughs> answer prayer is breaking people up. Amen? Answer prayer is breaking people up. So we have a lot of people, Hollywood, who are no longer where they were called to be in Christ. That's like Minister Ron. And y'all can sit down, except for Minister Ron. No, let us sit down. That's like Minister Ron. You know, she's a principal, Hollywood, and you, you, and he's on tour. Yes. Amen. And that's like Minister Ron, while she's a principal, meeting somebody on tour. Mm -hmm. Or hooking up with one of the dancers. Amen. Now here it is, he in answer to pray. Because he prayed to be that rapper. Yeah. Wow. Prayed to have that concert. Wow. Yeah. Said you're going to be that worshiper. Uh -huh. yeah. What you worshiping, son? Uh -huh. Huh? Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. You sit down, minister. Hallelujah, I want to call up minister. I didn't say the good news. First, let me read the scripture. 521 says, Prove all things, hold fast that to that which is good. Saints, hold fast to what Yahweh promised you. Right, amen. Once again, we've never walked in so much answer prayer. Amen. amen. Saints, we have uh, Avante Purnell mm -hmm. and his family mm -hmm. coming to Shabbat service. Amen. 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 Uh, this is answer prayer. Amen. He's on fire. Yes. Yes. Dominic, is that Dominic? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Uh, hey, it's dark in here, and you being dark don't help. Come on up here. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise be to you. You support the best. Amen. Hallelujah. What's that? Hallelujah. He's going to do at least two of his raps. Amen. Uh, he said before, Amen. he's always confessing to be a professional rapper, Amen. but he, he sees this ministry. Our ministry has complete answer prayer. Amen. So I want, I want, I want y'all to come ready. 
Amen. Amen. We're going to have us a good time. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Did you leave your son at home? No. Okay. Oh, Dean Drum is here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what y'all did to Calvin. I haven't heard from him since, uh, which one call it? Y'all know, got rid of Calvin. I ain't heard from him. Hallelujah. Um, <laughs> <Joel laughs> <and> Jackie. <laughs> Let me stop me prophetess in here. <laughs> Had the pronunciation right there, the one else. Antagonistic. 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 Right. Antagonistic Jack. <laughs> 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 but Saints is very major. I want to call it Minister Ron. I want to call it Deshaun. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Name me Ashura. Uh, we'll call it Chris. I'm in. Uh, Javier, if we can, can we do the box in the Shabbat? This Shabbat. We can? Okay, good. I, I, want, I, want, I want to have a good ad for it too. I mean, we put it on Facebook. Holly, I want y'all to come in ready. This is big. Come in ready, D. D, are you, are you our drummer? Yeah, I, yes. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure? No, because I, 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 want, I want to speak to Steve. No, I'll be here. Okay, I want to speak to Steve. Okay. Okay? Holly, because we're going in. We're, this is, uh, I definitely want to speak to Steve so I can have a. Uh, a, a, a date, an ending. I want to end on a good note because whenever we need to stand it. Amen? But this is our time. Amen. This is our time. And now what the Holy Father is saying to us, it's time to prove. Amen. I mean, we have something to prove Amen. in the name of Yahshua. Amen. Holly, this is very, very major. Holly, I know if some of you are discerning. Holly, but we're confessing Haiti, Dominican Amen. Republic. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're confessing my things. Holly, uh, not going to go into details. But I believe Yahweh is going to establish Amen. another Bet Hashem Yahweh assembly. And what we're going to do, we're going to rotate, yeah. hallelujah, um, uh, between myself, my elder Steve, um, our prophet. I mean, we're going to rotate, hallelujah. Right now, we're going to be taking the train. You with me, elder Steve? We're taking the train. <laughs> <laughs> Round trip. The saints, we have a vision. Amen. 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 We have a vision. This is our year of great growth. And what's going to take place Amen. is that each Amen. one of us uh, is going to make the, the ministry sound. It's, it's our time to prove. Yeah. Amen. 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 That being so, it's time to move forward. Uh, Avante is only 25 years old, if I'm correct. Hallelujah. So it's a, a new energized young youth with an expectation. Hallelujah. I have a great expectation. Amen. Uh, how long have you had this day to minister? Yeah, because I gave you a word. You have to minister again. Yeah. But I gave you, so you had the date before I gave you the word. No, I got the date um, for August. No, I gave you the date. What's the name of that real smart guy in the cartoon? Oh, I forgot. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Sure. On, a family guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ryan. 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 <laughs> well, without any further ado, we're going to come in here ready, y'all. Uh, I'm going to give it over to my dog. <laughs> it's stretched forth their hands with a pair with a tithe and altar. Father, we thank and praise you in the name of Yahshua, Father, God, for the tithe and the offering right now. Father, we speak multiplication a thousandfold. Father, we thank and praise you for the season of answer prayer. And we speak answer prayer taking place, Father, right now. We call these things in Yahshua's name. And we say, Amen. 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 Father, I thank and praise you right now in the name of Yahshua. Saints, it's a pleasure to be up here. Again, it's an honor. Um, this day... It's definitely a day I wasn't expecting Amen. because I'm here only because of Yahweh. Amen. 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 One thing I can say is, you know, it's not by choice. And that's what I want some of you to understand. It's not because I said, no, I want to go into ministry again. It's because Yahweh gave me a commandment. You need to set another date. And I'm like, Yahweh, okay, fine. And Yahweh's like, October 28th. And I was hesitant at first um, because you think I would be joyous about that day because today's my birthday. Today's your birthday? Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. 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 Oh, my God. 
<laughs> so it's a blessing because um, for years, every time my birthday would approach, um, I never saw it as a time to rejoice. I always saw it as a time of like sadness. And what I was always meditating on is every time it approached, I would think on how uh, how much I failed Yahweh, where how come I'm not where I'm supposed to be in Yahweh, why don't I have victory in my life? And Yahweh pretty much told me, no, I want to create a significant emotional event for you. Hallelujah! Amen. Amen. And what Yahweh told me was, I want you to celebrate. Mm. Celebrate your life. And instead of celebrating every year to remember what Yahweh had created, just like how Yahweh created all of you, all I would see is depression. All mm. I would see is sadness. You know, so that's why this was very um, significant for me because I I was hesitant because I know Yahweh wanted me to come up again, minister, and speak His word. And I'm like, okay, great. And then He told me the date, and I'm like, oh. you know. So for me to to be able to celebrate my life, to celebrate Yahweh, to celebrate where He's brought me from. Yahweh really gave me a new perspective. That's why it was challenging for me. Uh, it was a lot of warfare for me, for me to really come up again on this day. And I can say that I'm really happy because Yahweh gave me joy. Yahweh gave me um, a reason to rejoice again. Amen. How, no, my life is important. My life is special. Yes. I shouldn't Amen. just meditate on my failures because we all have failures. Yes, we Amen. do. Amen. But Amen. it's not my end. Come on. My failures are just a process for me to push through, Amen. to tell other people, look, I failed here. You don't have to end up in the same direction. Amen. And that's why I can say joyfully that I can celebrate Amen. on this day, especially because today I turned 30. Facebook, happy 30th birthday. I'm like, what? So, you know, they didn't sink in yet. But I'm definitely joyous just because I can celebrate and mark this day as a day that I'm not going to forget for myself. Amen. Because Yahweh want me to celebrate what He has done for me. Amen. And that's why I can say that I'm happy to celebrate my birthday. Amen. And I haven't been able to say that in years. Amen. You're so, not gifted in white. Amen. <laughs> So, <laughs> for this day, the word for tonight is to rejoice. Your day has arrived. When I looked up the word rejoice, I, um, from the Webster's Dictionary, it stated to feel or show that you are very happy about something. Mm. So, I meditate on what exactly do I have to be happy about? And usually, I would always, I'm always. I always have the tendency to be a little pessimistic towards myself. I am my own worst critic. And this time, I'm like, no. I may have fallen short at certain times, but Yahweh took me and He transformed me. Amen. And I have to remember where Yahweh brought me from. And that's where I had to meditate on the scripture from Psalms 118, verse 24. This is the day Yahweh has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And that's what Yahweh wanted me to focus on. To focus on that scripture, to remember, no, regardless of where you're coming from, regardless of your current situation, rejoice and be glad in the day, because Yahweh made this day. Amen. And what I had to meditate on is, sometimes I go through a lot of temptation, um, and a lot of times we deal with different trials and tribulations in our life. But Yahweh wants us to rejoice in the midst of diverse temptations. Mm. Yahweh wants us to have something to be happy about. Yes. So regardless of whatever you're dealing with at this present moment, it doesn't mean that it's your end. Amen. 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 So, when I was meditating on this word, uh, I was, I've been dealing with a lot of warfare just like hitting me left and right. And usually I don't go through um, anger. Like, that's not a uh, warfare for me. 
but I've just been hitting with anger left and right, um, mostly because of stress on my job, and you know, and for some reason I was dealing with a lot of rage and anger, and I'm like, you know, I don't know where this is coming from because I'm not usually an angry person, so. That's why I'm like getting hit left and right. Even um, yesterday, I like I knew Minister Louis was at New Day Prayer, so I texted him like, "Yo, keep me up in prayer, cause I'm so angry right now. Just keep me up in prayer, please." And you know, I just feel like it was throwing me off. And then Yahweh just threw the scripture at me yesterday. He's like, "Rejoice! <laughs> this is the day Yahweh has made." <laughs> I'm like. Really? <laughs> yeah. Right there. Yeah. And, and then just Yahweh speaking to me and saying that to me gave me reassurance. Amen. You know, that this will pass. Amen. You know, yes. it's not normal yes. warfare for me yes. to go through anger. Yes. It's not a normal, it's not my usual fight. And the fact that I had to go through this is like, you know, Minister Lou is like, remember, you're ministering tomorrow. You know, you're ministering tomorrow. And I'm like, no, I know I'm going to get hit on all sides just to throw me off. Because it's not about me. It's like, it's regardless of what I'm going through, it's not about me. Hallelujah. It's about Yahweh. And when you're up here, it's about being a vessel. Yes. Whenever Yahweh is using you, thank you. When Yahweh is using you, it's never about you. It's because Yahweh has a purpose. Right. Yahweh wants to speak to someone's heart. Whether it's in this house, or whether it's on the street, or whether it's to a friend, whether it's to a total stranger that you just run into. And, you know, Yahweh, Yahweh was really dealing heavily with me to celebrate what Yahweh has done. Because I recognize I don't always celebrate what Yahweh has done for me. I don't always celebrate and glory and give thanks Teach. giving to you Celebrate. Come on. And, you know, I was meditating on, okay, you know, my day has arrived. What does that mean for me? And I would, I would remember my testimony, how, um, and some of you may not be familiar with my testimony, that when I first, um, before I first met Yahweh, and I was in the world, I was walking in a homosexual lifestyle, um, and I was open about it, and what I was doing, I remember one night leaving from work, driving home, and I get a phone call from an old friend telling me, look, you know, our friend, he went and got tested, he went, I'm sorry, he went and donated blood, and they tested the blood, and they saw that he was HIV positive, and they wanted him to come back for more tests, just for reassurance. And it didn't click with me, but then I made the connection that um, that I was involved with another guy who he was previously involved with, and that hit me. And, you know, it was like a movie. It's like where the glass just shatters in the screen. That's how I felt. Um, that, you know, I could be HIV positive. And I just meditated on the first thought, which was, how am I going to tell my parents? Their only son's about to die. Um, and I wasn't sure what to do. Uh, my friends took me to, um, to a clinic to get tested. And the results um, came out negative, but you have to go back six months later, of course, and get retested. But I remember um, Martin Luther King weekend, um, 2006, in January. And I remember just going on my knees I didn't know what I was doing, but I just cried out to Yahweh's name. I'm like, well, if that's his name, then why Teach. not? What's going to hurt me? Teach. You know, I only heard the name once from my sister. Teach. But then I prayed. I prayed that out of the test would come negative, and I prayed that the other guy who had AIDS would be healed. Teach. So I just stepped down on faith in something I didn't understand what I was doing, but I did it because I felt it was my only option. And then the tested, like I said, came out negative, and then I remember praying that night. And I was thinking Yahweh, and I don't remember exactly what I asked him, but I got a response. And it was so faint in the distance that I just heard a voice, I heard a yes. The first thing I ever heard Yahweh say to me was yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Praise the Father. 
And what I, what I remember was just constantly hearing his voice. And that was my day of arrival to encounter a covenant relationship that I've never experienced before. And that was, that was my first moment to truly rejoice Amen. in something that was so foreign to me, yet Yahweh was watching over me the whole time. Mm. Yahweh kept me in the midst of my sin, in the yes. midst of my mistakes. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. And he pretty much designated the moment that I would meet him to say rejoice. This is the day that Yahweh has made. Mm. Be glad in it. Hallelujah. Amen. And I remember, you know, I remember when I was coming, first coming to the ministry in 2006 around summertime. And I remember getting on the prayer line, um, Ivan's prayer line. And, you know, I did understand, I had a vivid idea of what prophecy was, that it reveals what's in the heart at that time. So, I remember standing on the line, and back in the day, the lines were very long. <laughs> there was a long line of individuals to go to each person on the prayer line. So, there had to be like six people ahead of me getting prayer from Ivan. So, I'm like, okay, there's time. I'm like, Yahweh. I know I'm wrong, right? Please don't tell him that I'm walking home safe spirit. You know, I understand, I have to work on it. Please don't tell him. Please. So, you know, of course I didn't understand discernment at the time. But, you know, I'm like, please. And, you know, I go up there and he just gave me powerful words of prophecy about things that I was going to do, Amen. things I was going to do with Hallelujah. music. Amen. And at one time, I did, was it mention of my sin and everything Amen. I was doing Amen. wrong? Because that wasn't the focal point that Yahweh wanted me to focus on. It was to show you this is what you're going to become. Not what you presently are, Amen. but this Great is awesome. the future you. Amen. And I want to show you who that is. Mm -hmm. And... So I was very grateful. You know, not one time did I get rebuked, um, you know, in my beginnings in the ministry of, oh, you walk in a homosexual spirit, or this and that and the third. You know, Yahweh answered my prayer because I would tell Yahweh, you know, I didn't want people to know. You know, and, you know, Yahweh answered my prayer because I wanted to be able to have that day where I would be able to speak on it. Amen. And um, this might sound kind of funny, but I re part of my testimony is I remember praying one night in my living room, and I was like, Yahweh, you know, I know I'm born this way, but you know, I'm not going to involve myself with other men anymore. It's just going to be you and me, and that's it. Amen. And, but with the understanding that I'm born this way, you know, I can't change that, but it's just going to be you and me. That's it. That was my promise to Yahweh. Of course, Yahweh, you know, had another idea. And Yahweh's like, why are you defining yourself by your sexual desire? That's what Yahweh spoke to me and said. And I was like, huh? Um, you know, I didn't understand it at the time. And then... As I grew in Yahweh, you know, it was kind of like that an epiphany moment for me, where I recognized that though this is what I walked in prior to experiencing Yahweh, it doesn't mean that's what I'm going to remain as. And I remember it was November 3rd, 2007, um, Kenny, who used to be in ministry, uh, I went on his prayer line. And he gave me the word um, that blew my mind that Yahweh wanted to bless me with a wife and children. Amen. Amen. And which it blew my mind. It was a significant <laughs> emotional event for me. Because I couldn't believe Yahweh wanted to bless me Amen. with something like that because I had no desire for it. You know? So I recognized regardless of what my struggle was, Yahweh was showing me the future that I am to become. Amen. 
compared to what I was presently dealing with. Mm -hmm. And I realized um, how Yahweh wanted to transform it. And I've had plenty of falls in the process. And I recognized that a righteous man falls seven times and gets back up. And where I would sometimes feel disgusting because I would fall back um, into that spirit at times, a righteous man falls seven times and gets back up. I'm not really made righteous by my own means. I'm made righteous through Christ. Teach! That's the word. Which means Yahweh didn't leave me. Yahweh didn't forsake me. That every time I fell, it was always an opportunity to get back up because of His grace. We don't all get the same measure of grace. But when the grace is there, Take it, take it. That's right. Come on. That's right. Come on. So, I, you know, understanding and reflecting on my testimony, I realized how important it is for me to follow the instruction of Yahweh's voice. Because someone else needs that day of arrival. And someone needs that day of rescuing. So um, Yahweh was showing me about Moshe and how he had his day of arrival at the burning bush. Where he just saw a bush on fire, but the branches weren't burning. And then a voice spoke to him. And the voice spoke to him and told him how he heard the infliction of his people. And he saw the infliction. And he told Moshe that he was sending him to bring him out of that infliction from Pharaoh. It wasn't something he was looking for. But it was something that Yahweh had ordained. Rejoice, this is the day that Yahweh has made. Be glad of it. Because it's the day that Yahweh designated for Moshe to come to the realization of who he is called to be compared to where he was at that present moment. And Yahweh sent him on a mission. Yahweh is sending you on a mission because someone is in need of that day of arrival. To be rescued. But if you're not in the position to do that, then they won't meet their arrival date with Yahweh. When you're not obedient to his voice, then there's a missed opportunity in the spirit. Wow! There's a missed opportunity in the spirit. When you're not in your ordained position, Amen. Hmm. Then there is loss. Mm. And one thing I recognize, Moshe, he completed the task, he completed the mission at hand. And then I thought about King Saul and how Yahweh gave him a mission to go, and I'm probably pronouncing the name wrong, but. The Amicalites. That's it. Okay. Um, he, he was given a mission by a prophet, Shemuel, that he had to kill all the men, women, and children, and all the livestock, everything. Because Yahweh remembered the affliction that they had caused on the Israelites. And Yahweh didn't forget it. So prophet Shemuel put King Saul on a mission. The problem this time is that he was in the position of obedience to do exactly what Yahweh said. There are times where we're not always obedient to Yahweh's voice. Each one of us can testify to that. And, but there's that grace that Yahweh puts you back in when the grace is there. For Saul, on the other hand, the grace was not there. Because he was not obedient, 
the anointing left because Yahweh said that he will name another king. Because he regretted the day that he made Saul king. Hmm. Because he was not obedient to fulfill the fullness of what Yahweh spoke. And then Yahweh sends prophet Shinuel to Yesi's house to anoint the new king. And there were many sons that to show you had features of one who could be a king. But Yahweh was like, no, I don't look through man's eyes, I look at the heart. And then the young man attending the sheep was sent in. Because he was not in the presence at the time. And Yahweh said, that is the one. It was the one who was unexpected that received the anointing. It didn't mean he became king right away. Saul, Saul still remained king, but his, the fullness of his kingship was dependent upon Yahweh's anointing. The anointing had left. And the anointing was placed upon David. What am I saying? When the grace is there, take the grace. But don't frustrate Yahweh's grace. Because when you frustrate your, His grace, the anointing Where you find yourself in a position that you have to view someone fulfilling the word that was placed over your life. So where Saul could have been obedient to Yahweh, he wasn't obedient. And there was no grace. The anointing left. And David fulfilled what Yahweh called him to do as the king. Where Saul could have been the one to do that. So, the one thing you can meditate on is, no word returns to Yahweh void. But what it's set out to do shall be completed. With or without you. Amen. So rejoice, for this is the day Yahweh has made. Amen. It's the day that Yahweh made for your arrival with your appointment with destiny. Or you can rejoice in the fact that you can watch as someone fulfills the very words that Yahweh gave you. But you should still rejoice because his words getting fulfilled. But for some in the house, they're going to have to watch as others fulfill what they were called to fulfill. Mm -hmm. It didn't have to be that way. But when you don't take the grace when it's given to you, it may not be there when you're looking for it. So, recognize that though David wasn't king immediately, Yahweh raised him up. Right. And he had days of arrival, That's right. such as his moment to slay Goliath. It was an arrival for him. Though he was young, he was still skilled. His arrival date for people to recognize who he is. You need to recognize who you are and how Yahweh has implanted greatness within you. Don't forsake the greatness that Yahweh has given you. Embrace it. Yahweh wants you to rejoice in what He has given you. Yahweh wants you to be glad. He wants you to be full of joy. He wants you to be happy. You should have something that you're very happy about. That's what it is to rejoice. Yahweh wants you to rejoice in the things that He has given you and to not take for granted what He's implanted within you. Amen. Amen. Because what He gave you is needed for someone else's day of arrival. To meet and encounter who they're called to be 
for them to experience the salvation of Christ that you experienced yourself. But when you're not walking in your position, then you're denying someone that covenant relationship that no one can ever fill because there is no relationship like the one you have with Yahweh. Yahweh fills the void that no man can fill in your life. So rejoice in your covenant relationship with Christ. Rejoice in the fact that the times where you fell, Yahweh extended his hand because his arm is not too short. Right. Mm. Right. 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 In which you cannot grab a hold on to. Right. Mm. Right. Some good teaching right here. Right. Recognize that Yahweh did not leave you nor forsake you. And the times where I felt that he should have, he didn't. Amen. The times that I felt for myself that I'm not going to get out of the situation I put myself in because I will constantly run back to the old man Yahweh's hand was reached out for me to grab hold. It was just right there waiting. Just grab hold. I'm right here. And what I've learned over the years is the love that Yahweh has for me, Amen. which I can't always understand how, Amen. why. But it's unconditional. It doesn't need an explanation. Because His love transcends sometimes our own understanding of what love is. Because we tend to put conditions on our love at times. In our relationships, for some in their marriages, sometimes with your children, recognize that Yahweh's love, that's that type of love that keeps you when you feel you don't deserve to be kept. So rejoice in the day that Yahweh has made because he made each day, whether it's a day of jubilee, a day of great testimony, a day of warfare, Amen. Yahweh made the day. Amen. So rejoice in it. Hallelujah. Because you have covenant relationship. You have the voice. And he won't leave you or forsake you just because you're, you're in your lowest of lows. But in your weakness, his strength is perfected. Amen. Thank you, Paul. So always remember that regardless of your present situation, there's always a way out. Because Yahshua provided the way out Thank for you. you. Amen. Amen. Rejoice in the day Yahweh has made and be glad in it. Because you have something to celebrate your life. Amen. Amen. Your life is a celebration because it's a product of highs and lows, times of joy, times of sorrow. But it's your story. It's the story that Yahweh has crafted because someone needs your story. Because someone is going through almost exactly what you have gone through. And that you're here because you made it out. Amen. Amen. And regardless of the warfare that may come your way, rejoice. Because in the midst of diverse temptations, Yahweh has made a way out for you. Amen. Because Yahweh will never give you more than what you can bear. Yahweh is so marvelous that in that lowest of lows, when you feel like there's no way out, his hand is right there. Hmm. You just have to believe. Amen. And you can grab hold of it. Amen. It just takes a step of faith to just grab hold of his hand and then he just pulls you right out. Every time he pulled me out, every time I would like cast my pearls to the swine, he just pulled me out. Talk about it. Every time that I would fall back into that old man. Come on. He pulled me out with his hand. Because I had the faith to grab hold. Mm -hmm. 
Rejoice in the day that Yahweh has made and be glad of it. <clears throat> because you are here right now. Because you have survived something. You have survived whatever it is that tried to take you out. You survived. Amen. Someone needs your survival story. Amen. Bishop. Amen. Amen. Holly, listen, saints. Holly, very, very powerful word. Yeah. Holly, um, I love uh, good teaching. I mean, I'm called my prayer partners. I love good teaching because good teaching, um, uh, I get words. I mean, now we want to understand uh, what the Holy Spirit was saying. So there's a couple words that I had. First of all, I want to say this. The word about us rejoicing, this is the day that Yahweh's made, is because people are not happy where they are. Regardless, people are not happy where they are. When you're given a word to rejoice, this is the day. It means I want you to rejoice right in the name. In our ministry, we have too many people in powerful positions who are not happy. Mm -hmm. What this produces, it produces a spirit of suicide. Mm -hmm. Amen. Whether it is a physical suicide or a spiritual suicide. What I was telling my wife is that what happens, come forth from this real quick. People come into the ministry and I build a relationship with them. Amen. What I noticed is before people leave the ministry, they first leave Yahweh. But they still have a connection to me. So it's, it's like, you know, uh, it's like, you know, I, I'm very strong with my friendships. So it's like they'll try to keep me as a friend as they distance away from Yah, but eventually then they break totally away. Amen? And what I was telling my wife is, People have to recognize how what distances them from Yahweh is they're not happy with it. Nobody leaves a happy relationship. Right. Right. But you don't see your relationship as happy when you just meditate on the wrong things. I mean, very speedily, I just want to speak the words that I got here. Very powerful word. One was, I had no desire for it. I think we're not honest that we didn't have a desire for Yahweh. We did not have a desire for him. Amen. Any desire you have for Yahweh is because he put it in. The Bible says there's no good thing in you. Amen. You can kill it. So any good desire you have, Yahweh gave you that desire because you didn't have that desire. And then I had no desire for Yahweh's plan. I mean, when I was in, I had no desire for Yahweh's plan. Yahweh brought me to a place of saving me. To tell me his plan, yes. and then for me to fight for his plan. And this is another key one. Some people miss this. I was born this way. Saints, we don't like to admit that I was born a sinner. I was born to like sin. I was born to feel like I don't need Yahweh. Amen. I, come on, I, need, I need you to listen to me. Amen. Some of us were born with addictions. We're born that way. Now. When you're born that way, that means how you're going to crave it regardless. I, I, I need you with me in the name of Yahshua. Amen? But that's when we have to recognize the power of being born again. Amen. The power of being born again doesn't care how you were born. Is anybody with me? The power of being born again, that's the power of being born again. Amen? The power of being born again, hallelujah, it doesn't mean why you were born. But the Bible says, while I was yet in sin, Christ died for me. While I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me. The only way for you to change from a sinner to a saint is by the working of the Holy Spirit. And the rest of our life, within our relationship with Christ, there's a constant changing of desires. The rest of our life, we're constantly, Holly, uh, uh, assuming to our new desires we have in Christ. Now listen to this. What's so powerful is that we crave after our new desires while we fight our old cravings for the old. Amen. I need y'all with me in the name of Yahshua. Amen. Anybody 
is thinks they don't have cravings from the old you, you're not us. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Amen? My old me always craves me and always wants to define me as a man. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you with me? In the name of Yahshua. Uh, the last thing. Uh, Shemuel had to anoint David. Uh, meaning that Shemuel had to live. Because he was the only one who had the power to anoint. So you had this old man who had to live. And we recognize that David was anointed. Hallelujah. At least, at least 20 years. Amen. Before he actually became the king. That's 20 years he had to fight for a word on the run. He was fighting to be king on the run. Some of us, we fight who Christ calls us to be on the run. Amen. We're running from something while we're still confessing, I'm going to be who he called me to be. Here it is that Yahweh ordained him to be king and he's running. How did he, no, don't take it wrong way. He ain't acting like a king. He's acting like a runner. Mm -hmm. Amen? But he had to run. Some of us, we have to understand that our flight is in Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen? Our flight, our run is in Christ. Mm -hmm. Bible says, flee you for us. How, you can be fleeing in Christ. I mean, we have to understand. But right now, hallelujah, saints, if you're dealing with your life just being heavy, break it right now. Amen. Amen. It's time to have fun again. Amen? Amen? When it says rejoice, it's like I want you to rejoice right now. Right? You know? Rejoice. This is the day. Yeah, when, you, when you are not happy in your present state in Christ, you always backslide. Mm -hmm. yes. The Bible is very explicit in the name of the the children of Israel, hallelujah, the reason why they roamed around in the desert for years, hallelujah, because they weren't satisfied with being with y'all. Mm -hmm. Amen? They kept looking back. I had it better back then. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We have it better right now. Listen to my hands. Follow right now. I thank and pray for the idea to cut it that right now, Father Yah. I admit, Father Yah, I was born a sinner. But Father, I'm so glad, Father Yah, that you gave me a call. And you gave others a call. A call whereby, Father Yah, we were no longer satisfied in our sin. We're very thankful we came from a place, Father Yah. That our sin just couldn't do it. Father, we came to a place that we couldn't live this life without you. Father, I want to thank and praise you, Father Yah, for that life transforming moment. Father, now we ask you in the name of Yahshua. Make us into the people you promised us to be. Yes, sir. And during the process, we're going to rejoice. During the process, Father Yah, we're coming who you called us to become. We're going to rejoice. We're going to rejoice in every temptation. We're going to rejoice in every battle. We're going to rejoice, Father Yah. We're going to rejoice in the relationships. We're going to rejoice in the ups and in the downs. Because, Father, you are the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Father, right now, I speak hope. Yahweh says, speak hope over your situation. Yahweh says, speak hope. Speak hope. Heaven of us. What makes temptation temptation is you knowing the truth. Temptation wouldn't bother you if you didn't know the truth. Temptation, when you were in the world, it didn't bother you. It was like, I got to get my groove on. But now that you have the knowledge of the truth, now that you have the knowledge of Christ, honey, that temptation becomes a battle. Yahweh says, in the midst of your battle, rejoice because I've already promised you victory. I've already promised you a golden crown. Father, right now in Christ Yahshua's name, I speak miracles and wonders. I say people to take joy, hope, and strength in their life. Father, I say this is the moment, this is the time, this is the happening. Father, right now we say to God that in this, your name will be magnified and glorified. Yahweh says you're going home changed. Yes, sir. You're going home delivered. You're going home you're going home mighty. You're going home forever changed. Father, right now in Christ Yahshua's name, I thank you for this mighty word. And we call these things done. In Christ Yahshua's name. Amen. 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 Am